Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. In this video, we will be going through our RSI indicator trading strategy in depth and how we use it in combination with price action. We also want to take the time to thank you all for your continued support in helping us get our YouTube award. So let's start the road to 1 million. If you want more videos more often, please smash the like button, subscribe and turn on the notifications bell so that you know exactly when new content is released. So two very important points before we start. First, indicators are not magic and we never use indicators on their own for trade entries. We use indicators to support what we have already established with price action. And second, everything we discuss in this video can be used for currency trading, stock trading, and crypto because price action stays relatively consistent across different assets. So, we're going to go very in-depth in this video. So here's a quick breakdown of what we will be covering. First, we'll go through all the core concepts to get everyone on the same page. Then we're going to go through the strategies section. And finally, we will show you how we used all these concepts to take trade entries on Tesla and Apple during the big market pullback. So strap in, as we have a lot to cover today, so let's get into it. So, what is the RSI indicator? RSI stands for Relative Strength Index, and it's an indicator that you apply to your charts that is often used for identifying overbought or oversold markets. So let's apply the RSI to our charts. At the top here, click Indicators. Type in R, and it'll show up right here. Click Relative Strength Index and then it will be applied to your charts along the bottom. Now this line here is 70 on the RSI and this line here is 30 on the RSI. Everything at or above the 70 line is what we call the overbought region. Everything at or below the 30 line is what we call the oversold region. So in relative terms, when the RSI line touches the 30, just like it is right here, it indicates that the price of the asset you are looking at is cheap. When the RSI line touches the 70, just like it is right here, it indicates that the price of the asset you are looking at is expensive. Again, this is in relative terms. So how is the RSI indicator traditionally used? Now, this is what most traders do. When the RSI enters oversold, they'll start buying and entering long positions, expecting price to go up. When the RSI enters overbought, they'll start selling and entering short positions, expecting price to go down. Now, here's the problem with using the RSI indicator like this. Notice how at this level here on price, the RSI has already entered oversold. So if you started to buy and enter long positions, price would have continued to go against you for quite some time before it finally reversed. What this means is, in heavily trending markets, the RSI indicator can stay inside of the overbought or oversold region for a long, long time. And if you keep taking trades solely based on the RSI indicator, expecting price to reverse, you will most likely rack up a significant amount of losses. So this then leads us to a question we often get asked, which is, how do we use the RSI indicator where it actually helps our overall analysis? Also, right now, comment below and tell us what video topics you want us to cover as we always look at the comments to decide what to create next. Now, we use the RSI indicator in one way and one way only, which is combining RSI with divergences or RSI divergence. So, what is divergence? Divergence occurs when price is moving in the opposite direction of the RSI indicator, which can then be used as an early indication of a possible, keyword possible, trend change. So, in this uptrend here, price made a higher high, but on the RSI, it made a lower high which created a divergence and resulted in a reversal of price. Again to the left, price made a higher high, whereas the RSI made a lower high, which created a divergence and resulted in a reversal of price. So going in the opposite direction, 
In this downtrend, price made a lower low, whereas the RSI made a higher low, which created a divergence and resulted in a reversal of price. Now, divergence can be used in many other indicators as well, one of which is MACD, which is popular amongst many traders. So this then leads us to another question we often get asked, which is, why do we prefer to use the RSI indicator over MACD? Don't forget to comment your questions below. Now, the reason is simple, and it's because the RSI indicator gives us a more precise and clear divergence formation, which results in higher quality trade entries. Here is the exact same chart on both sides. On the left and below is the MACD indicator applied. On the right and below is the RSI indicator applied. Notice how on the RSI here, it gives us a very crisp and crystal clear divergence formation. But now if you look at the MACD, there isn't a divergence signal at all. And this is an issue we often experience with the MACD, which is a lack of or low quality divergence signals. Now, let me be clear. There is no right or wrong choice. Both work perfectly fine. We just prefer the RSI because it works best with our overall strategy. And MACD might work best with your overall strategy. Neither is better than the other. Because above all, indicators are not magic and we do not use them on their own for trade entries. We use them to support what we have already established with price action. Now, that being said, if you know how to use divergences correctly, it is one of the most powerful tools for spotting and confirming high quality reversal trades. And you'll soon find out why. So let's cover the types of divergences we look for. Now, there are many kinds of divergences people use, but here are the main two types that we look for as part of our RSI strategy. First is wide divergence, and second is tight divergence. And under each type, there are two subtypes. Subtype one is when the divergence occurs at or inside of the overbought or oversold region. And subtype two, is when the divergence occurs close to the overbought or oversold region, but does not touch. So let's go through the first type, which is wide divergence. Wide divergence is exactly what the name states it is. It is divergence where its swings are very wide and very obvious to spot on the charts. Here is an uptrend. We had our divergence, which then triggered a reversal. Notice how wide these swings are, hence the name wide divergence. Same thing in a downtrend. We had our divergence, which then triggered a reversal. And again, notice the clear wide swings and wide divergence. So how do wide swings relate to price action? Wide divergence is also what we call high quality divergence, because we like to see wide swings and price moving sideways before looking for any kind of reversal trade, because it tells us that the side in control of the dominant trend before the reversal is no longer in complete control, hence causing the wide swings in both directions. Now again, there are the two subtypes of wide divergence, which is one, when the divergence occurs at or inside of the overbought or oversold region. Notice how it's clearly occurring in the oversold region or two, when the divergence occurs close to the overbought or oversold region. Notice how it's close, but not touching. So moving on to the second type of divergence, which is tight divergence, which is exactly that. It's divergence where the swings are tight or very close together. Here's your downtrend. We had our divergence before the reversal occurred but notice how the swings are very tight, hence the name tight divergence. Now in this example of tight divergence, you can still see the swings of price, but sometimes with tight divergence, it isn't as easy to see, especially to the untrained eye. So here's an example. This here is tight divergence. At first glance, it might not look like it, but this is what price is doing. Run, small pullback, run meaning this here is your lower low, while the RSI indicator made a higher low, which is clear tight divergence, 
Again, this might have been harder to spot for some traders. So here's an easy trick. At the top of your charts, if you click this button right here, it will turn your chart into a line chart. So let's do exactly that. Let's turn this exact chart into a line chart. Now, notice how you can clearly see price making the lower low and the RSI making a higher low, showing a clear, tight divergence. And then once you identify this on the line chart, jump back to candlesticks. So here's another example. This here is where your divergence occurred. And here is the movement that price made. Run, pull back, run. Price made a higher high, while the RSI made a lower high, hence your divergence. Again, let's switch to the line chart to show this more clear. Here you can now clearly see the swings of price. Higher high, lower high, clear divergence. And again, when you're done, just switch back to your candlesticks. So when we get to the strategies section, you'll understand why tight divergence is just as important as wide divergence. So again, we have the two subtypes of tight divergence, which is one, when the divergence occurs at or inside of the overbought or oversold region. This is clearly occurring in the region. Or two, when the divergence occurs close to the overbought or oversold region. Notice how it's close, but not touching. So let's put both wide divergence and tight divergence on one chart as a quick recap. Wide divergence, reversal. Wide divergence, reversal. Wide divergence, reversal. And then tight divergence here, reversal. So as a quick recap, here is our divergence hierarchy. Now all divergence is good, but just use this hierarchy to rank the quality of the divergence and the trade you are looking at. So let's keep building on this and move on to the next section, which is combining divergence with confirmation. So divergence combined with confirmation means you look for price action after the divergence occurs to confirm that the reversal is real and not a fake out. So let's break this down. This is a clear moving uptrend as price is making higher highs and higher lows. Run, pull back, run, pull back, run. You then spot this clear wide divergence formation. Now this is what we call divergence unconfirmed because it can start as a divergence, pull back slightly and then still continue on. And then you would have been faked out and took a loss. Don't forget that you are trading counter trend. So just an RSI divergence alone isn't enough because that would be guessing based off an indicator. So what you need to do is combine RSI divergence with price action after it occurs in order to confirm that the reversal is real. Now there are many price action strategies we use in combination with divergence, but to keep things simple for this video, one great way to do this is to apply a dynamic trend line onto the immediate trend. Then you wait for the breakthrough the trend line to occur, which then confirms the divergence and confirms the reversal. As a bonus, this breakdown also made a lower low. And at this point is when you go to the lower timeframes and start looking for short entries. So let's show this again. This is a clear moving downtrend as price is making lower highs and lower lows. You then spotted your clear Y divergence. This again is your divergence unconfirmed. So what you do is you put a trend line onto the immediate trend and wait for a break to occur. As price came up, there would still be no trade for us as price failed to break the trend line. It's not until you finally had your break here that we would consider long trade entries. So you are probably thinking, why not just jump right into a trade at the second head of divergence here? Well, you don't know this move would occur, meaning price could have pulled back slightly and then continued down. Again, you are going counter trend and counter trend trades need extra confirmation as they hold more risk. So this works the same with stocks. Here's the Disney stock. You again had your moving uptrend as price was making higher highs and higher lows. You had your clear Y divergence. You then had your trend line applied. And once you had price break through the trend line, the divergence is confirmed. 
which presented a possible short trade opportunity. So let's go through the same concept, but with tight divergence. Here's your clear moving downtrend. You then spotted your tight divergence. So let's switch this chart to a line chart to show this more clearly. Again, as you can clearly see, higher low on the RSI, lower low on price, which is divergence. So jumping back to candlesticks. After this divergence was identified, we put a trend line over the immediate trend and once price broke through is when the divergence is confirmed, which presented possible long trade opportunities. So this works the same with stocks. Here's the Pinterest stock, clear moving downtrend. You then spotted your tight divergence. Let's again switch to the line chart to show this more clearly. Again, as you can clearly see, higher low on the RSI and lower low on price, which is divergence. So back to candlesticks. So again, we put a trend line over the immediate trend. And once price broke through is when the divergence is confirmed, which presented possible long trade opportunities. Now, here's a great example as to why you need confirmation and why to not enter trades solely based off of divergences. Here's the Walmart stock. Price was clearly in an uptrend as you had your run, pullback, run, pullback. Now, you would have then spotted this great wide divergence here and you thought to yourself, this is a great short opportunity. What you are forgetting is that this is a very strong uptrend. As you should already know by now, you would only start considering short entries after the divergence if you had the trend line break, a break through the key support, and price making a lower low. Without that, the divergence was unconfirmed and there was no trade. To make matters worse, a lot of traders went long at this access point here where the trend line and key support level both lined up perfectly. This is actually a concept we discuss with our members about knowing where price is coming from, but we will cover that in a future video. So divergence combined with confirmation is only the base concept. We do not enter trades simply off of these two factors. Now let's take this up a notch and move on to the actual strategy section of this video. In this section, we will be building on all concepts we have discussed in past videos. So if there's something you don't understand, make sure to go back and watch all our older videos after you watch this one. So let's get into it. So the foundation of this strategy is combining divergences with key levels or areas of confluence for high quality trade entries. As a quick recap, key levels or areas of confluence are areas where many schools of traders are watching for possible trade entries, which increases the chances of a possible reversal. Again, if you need a refresher, check out our past videos. Now, there are three variations to the divergence plus key area RSI strategy. Type one is divergence at a key level. This uses only one time frame. Type two is candlestick price action at a key level and divergence inside of those candlesticks on the lower time frame. This type uses two time frames. And type three, which is divergence at a key level and then looking for a trend change inside of the leg two head. This type uses two time frames as well. So let's start with type one, which is divergence forming at a key level or area. Again, type one involves using only one time frame. Also, you can find these setups on any time frame you choose to trade with. So you look left and noticed that when price came up to this area, it hit and reversed drastically, making this a key level of resistance. So you had it drawn in. Now, as price came back up for candlestick and resistance traders, there were multiple entry points for short trades. But now as a divergence trader, once you noticed this wide divergence form right at key resistance, you would apply your trend line like this. And once price broke it with this bearish momentum candle is when you would start looking for trade entries short. This also shows why you should never chase trades as there's always another trade opportunity coming up. So let's show this again going the other way. You look left and spotted this key area here where price reversed from drastically. And it is also the lowest point that price has reached in recent time. So you had it drawn in. Now as price came back down, 
Not only did you have a reaction to this level through the candle with the wick sticking out, you also had a great wide divergence form. Again, a reaction does not equal a trade. So you put a trend line onto the immediate trend like this. And once price broke through the trend line, it shows that buyers actually stepped in at this level. Then you would go to the lower time frames and start looking for trade entries long. So let's do the same thing except with tight divergence. Again, key support level because price hit and reversed from here drastically. As price came back down, you had tight divergence form right at this key level of support. So switching to the line chart, again, price made a lower low while the RSI made a higher low, showing a clear tight divergence. So let's jump back. You then place your trend line on top of the current trend. And when price breaks the trend line, the support level and tight divergence are confirmed meaning buyers actually stepped in at this level. And this is when you would look for trade entries long. So again, you had your drastic reversal, which gave you your key support. Price came down and formed a tight divergence. Key trend line applied through these multiple touch points. And once price broke through, the divergence and support level is confirmed. And you would then look for long entries. So right now in the market, the Euro Kiwi is creating one of these patterns. You had your key resistance and swing high level here through these multiple reversals. Tight divergence has formed. So we put a trend line onto the immediate trend like this, but there is no trade unless price breaks through this trend line, because again, price can continue up. Now type one of the RSI divergence strategy is a great foundational strategy, but we personally do not trade using only one time frame because it doesn't give us enough data and insight. So let's take this up a notch and move on to type two of the RSI divergence strategy, which is identifying candlestick patterns at a key level or area and looking for divergence inside of those candlesticks on the lower time frame. So before we continue, a question we often get asked is, how do we create and edit our YouTube videos? And how did we grow our channel so fast if you want to learn exactly how we do it all, head on over to our website at wisetrade.com and we'll show you how to do this step by step. Now, type 2 uses two time frames, and you can use any combination of time frames you want, as it all depends on your style, and we'll discuss this further. So first we're going to break down the premise of this strategy, and then we'll go through it more in depth. This here is the 12 hour time frame which we really like using for medium term trades. So we noticed these two points here where price reversed from drastically, which gave us support and we had it drawn in. Now, as price came back down to this level of support, you had no idea what would form. You were waiting to see if there would be candlesticks forming. When price got to this area, you had multiple candlesticks with long wicks sticking out, showing that price is indeed reacting to this level. So most people would enter long right away. But again, that would be guessing because price can react and stall at a key level and still break right through. So what do we do? We need to look inside of these candlesticks on the lower time frame to see if there is price action that shows us that a trend change is occurring. This is very key. Before you look inside of these candlesticks, you have no idea what you will find. That is what price action is in a nutshell, which is reacting to what you see and not guessing the direction of a trade. So let's bring up the four hour time frame and put it beside this one. Again, here on your left is the 12 hour time frame we just looked at. And here on the right is the same asset we are looking at, but using the lower time frame, specifically the four hour time frame, meaning each candlestick represents four hours of time. This support level is the same support level here. This downtrend here is the same downtrend here. Now here's the key. You identified your long wick candlesticks at key support here, but it wasn't enough data for a trade entry. So you looked inside of those candlesticks on the lower time frame to see what you had. And this is what you found. Great divergence that formed inside of the long wick candlesticks. This is a high quality trade now. Also, notice how on the 12 hour time frame, you couldn't put a trend line onto the immediate trend because the swings weren't wide enough. But here on the four hour time frame, 
you can easily place a trend line onto the immediate trend. Again, you were waiting for a breakout, which you got through the momentum candle that then confirms the divergence and the candlesticks and the level of support. And that is when you would start looking for trade entries long using the lower intraday timeframes. So let's show this again. So before we continue, we want to answer a question you probably have, which is what time frame combinations to use? Again, don't forget to leave your questions and comments below. So the answer to this question is simple. Any combination of time frames works as it all depends on your style and speed of trade. And this is why we are going to show you all the different time frame combinations. Now for our members and us, we follow very specific time frame combinations, but that's because it suits our strategy the best. But for you as a trader, choose a time frame combination that best suits your strategy and your speed of trade. So let's get back into it. So this is the daily time frame. You again spotted these two reversal points, giving you your key level of resistance. So as price came back up, you had this candle here with the wick sticking out, showing a reaction to the level. It's at this point that you would look inside of this candle and start watching the lower time frames and wait to see if you would get a trend change. So let's put the four hour time frame beside this one. Same resistance level, same uptrend, and the area here we were looking at on the daily, it's the same area here on the four hour time frame. You had your clear divergence here and a great wedge pattern forming. So you had it drawn in. Then once you had your break out of the wedge on the bottom side and price making a lower low, the divergence is confirmed and you would start looking for short trade entries on the lower intraday timeframes. So we'll cover all the trading patterns in depth in a future video. So let's show this again. This is the eight hour time frame. You identified your key reversal point here where price shot up from. So you had your support level drawn in. As price came back down, you had your inside bar candle with the wick sticking out the top, showing a reaction to the level of support. So after you spotted this, you would then want to look inside of these candlesticks and inside of this area. So let's pull up the four hour time frame and put it side by side. Same support level, same downtrend. And these candlesticks and area here is the same area right here. Now, notice how inside of your candlesticks, you had this great tight divergence forming. Let's pull up the line chart so you can see it more clearly. Again, price made a lower low while the RSI made a higher low. So it's clear divergence. So jumping back. You then again, put your trend line onto the immediate trend. And once you had your breakthrough as confirmation, you would then start looking for trade entries long using the lower intraday timeframes. So let's show type two, but with trend trades. This here is on crypto and the 12 hour timeframe. You had a clear moving uptrend here, reversal point here that gave you your key level. Now, as price reached this area, you had multiple candlesticks reacting to the level. The 50 EMA also lines up perfectly with this level. So again, we want to look inside of this area. So let's bring up the four hour time frame. Same key level, same downtrend. And this area here is this area here. Again, clear divergence at the key level. Trend line placed above. And once you had your break, you would start looking for trade entries long as your directional bias is confirmed. So one more. Here's the daily time frame. This was your clear moving uptrend key level here because of these two reversal points. So after we had these two perfect long wick candles reacting to the level, we wanted to look inside of them to see if we had price action that signaled a possible trend change. So let's pull up the four hour. Same key level, same pullback. We had perfect wide divergence right at the key level. And then you would place your trend line above. And once you had price breakthrough, you would then look for trade entries long on the lower intraday timeframes. So right now in the market, the pound dollar is creating one of these setups. This here is the weekly time frame. We have our key level drawn in because of these reversal points where price tanked down from showing how key this level is. It is also a swing high, meaning the highest point that price has reached. We had a reaction to the level through this candlestick with the wick sticking out. But again, a reaction does not equal a trade. So let's look into this candlestick here and pull up the daily. 
So on the left is the weekly time frame, and on the right is the daily time frame. Same resistance level, same uptrend. And this area here on the weekly is the same area here on the daily. Now, notice that you have great divergence that is formed right at this key level of resistance. We then placed a trend line below. So you should already know where we go from here. We do not start looking for short trade entries unless we have a break of this key trend line. So let's take this even further and move on to type three of the RSI divergence strategy. This concept is more advanced and we usually reserve it only for our members. But since it'll help you all and adds on top of everything that we have previously discussed, we're going to reveal it to you now. So type three of the RSI divergence strategy is finding divergence at a key level and then looking inside of the leg two head of that divergence for price action that signals a trend change. Now, before we continue, if you're enjoying this video, make sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave a comment below with your questions, thoughts, or topics you want us to cover. That just goes a long way. So when would you use type three? There are two reasons why. Reason number one and type three A is when you don't have good price action on the main time frame you found the divergence on. So you need to look inside of the leg two head. And reason number two and type three B, you want to get in with an earlier entry right at the leg two divergence instead of waiting for the larger trend line break. So again, you would need to look into the leg two head. So let's start with type 3A, which is when you don't have good price action. This is the daily time frame. You had your key level of resistance here. You then had a great wide divergence form. Now here's the problem. You didn't have a good candlestick form at the key level. All you had was a green bullish candle. Also, you are unable to put a trend line onto this trend. If you put it here, it's too low. And if you put it like this, it's too tight. So again, the two problems, no candlesticks for type two and no trend line for type one. Great level, no entry. So to get around this, you used type three, which is to look inside of the divergence leg two head right here and see if we could find price action that showed a trend change so that you can find the end of the second head. So let's bring up the four hour time frame. So again, on the left was the daily time frame we just looked at. And on the right is the four hour time frame. Same resistance level, same uptrend. And this level here that we were just looking at is this same level here. Now, notice on this time frame, we had perfect Y divergence at the key level. What this means is you have divergence inside of the leg two head of the wider divergence. So this allows you to see when the leg two is possibly ending. Now to confirm it all, you again are able to place a trend line onto the immediate trend on this time frame. And then once you had your trend line break, everything is confirmed and you would start looking for trade entry short on the lower intraday time frames. So let's move on to type three B, which is when you want an earlier entry. So this is the 12 hour time frame, and you had your clear reversal point here, giving you key resistance. So you had great wide divergence form right at the key resistance level. Now the issue is that your trend line was placed at these swing lows here, meaning that you would have to wait for price to break it down here before you could enter the market. Now you already had good candlesticks forming at the key level. So how do you get in with an earlier entry right at this leg two head of divergence? Again, you need to look inside of it for a possible trend change so that you can find the end of the second head. So let's bring up the four hour time frame. Same resistance level, same uptrend. And the leg two head here is the same area here. Now on this time frame, you had a wedge pattern that is also divergence. And then once you had your break, this confirmed the end of the leg two head of the wider divergence. Then you can get in with an earlier entry here. But for more secure traders, you can still wait for the larger trend line break and enter down here. Again, it all comes down to your style and how aggressive you want to take entries. 
But now we want to show you something very interesting, which also brings us to the final section of this video. We're going to show you how our members and us used divergence combined with correlations to enter trades on Tesla and Apple during the deep S&P 500 market pullback. Now first, what are correlations in trading? In simplified terms, correlations means how different assets move in relation to each other. So knowing that, a positive correlation means when one asset moves in a specific direction, a positively correlated asset will move in relative sync and in the same direction. An example of this is the S&P 500 and its positive correlation to US stocks. When the S&P 500 shows strength and moves up, oftentimes US stocks will move in sync and in the same direction, which again is a positive correlation. Again, this is not the law. We are stating this in relative terms. So just use it as guidance. This also means an inverse correlation is when one asset moves in a specific direction, an inversely correlated asset will go in the opposite direction. An example of this is the VIX index being inversely correlated with the S&P 500. The VIX index is the volatility index, also called the fear index, meaning when the VIX rises, it represents an increase of fear or uncertainty in the market. And since the VIX is inversely correlated to the S&P 500, when the VIX rises and fear increases, the S&P 500 falls. This is not the law. We are stating this in relative terms. So just use it as guidance. Now that you understand correlations, let's break down how our members and us used correlations in combination with divergence for trade entries on Tesla and Apple during the recent market pullback. So let's first start with step one, which was tracking the S&P 500. When you look at the monthly timeframe, this is a very clear long-term uptrend. You then had your very long-term trend line that started all the way back to the Great Recession and has been respected every time price has reached it, which shows how key this trend line is. You then had this very key support level here because of this reversal point. Now, this then gave us our access point or area of confluence here where the trend line and support level crossed, which we covered in our last video. You then had a perfect long wick candle right at this access point, showing that it was respected this time around. Now, this is very key. Even though this was a deep pullback, Without price breaking this long-term trend line and making a lower low, the long-term uptrend is still intact. So after we had this very long wick candle react to the access point, this gave us a bullish bias, but unconfirmed because it is the monthly timeframe and we don't enter trades on it. So what we needed to do is go to the daily and look for price action that showed a trend change inside of this downtrend and confirm the monthly price action. And the reason we need to do this is because even though your long-term trend is an uptrend, your short-term trend is still a downtrend. So we need the trend change from a downtrend to an uptrend to be confirmed, AKA time frame confluence. So let's pull up the daily. Again, same support level, same trend line, same pullback and downtrend. And this access point here is this same area here. First, you had a tight divergence right at the access point. Let's pull up the line chart to show this. Price made a lower low and the RSI made a higher low showing clear divergence. So back to candlesticks. You then place your trend line above and once price broke through it, you had your higher high, which again confirms the trend change and showing that the downtrend is over and that the larger uptrend can continue. So the monthly is now confirmed by the daily trend change, which then gave us a bullish and long bias. Now, this is where correlations comes in. Again, we first found price action on the S&P 500 that gave us our bullish long bias. Then, since the S&P 500 has a positive correlation with US stocks, this again gave us a bullish long bias on US stocks we were watching. This then brings us to the Tesla stock, which is a US company, and again, gave us a bullish long bias on it. Now, this doesn't mean we jump in blindly. We still need to find a high quality entry. So let's pull up the Tesla stock. So here's the Tesla monthly timeframe. We first identified this key monthly level through the four clear reversal points showing how key this level is. 
If you watched our past videos, you would know that what you find on the higher timeframes or what is visually obvious on the higher timeframes, such as the weekly and monthly, are very, very key levels. So price then finally broke through and old resistance becomes new support. So let's pull up the weekly, which is where we found price action on. So same key level. This key area here is this same area here. Now on the weekly, we had a perfect long wick candle form right at the key level and exactly where the 50 EMA crosses, making this an access point, an area of high confluence. This again gave us a bullish bias, but unconfirmed. So we then needed to look inside of this trend here for a trend change on the daily. So let's bring up the daily. So on the left is the weekly we just looked at and on the right is the daily. Same key level, same pullback. And this area here is this same area here. Trend line placed onto the immediate trend. And once it broke and made a higher high and the previous higher low, the trend change was confirmed. It was at this point that we went to the intraday timeframes and took long entries using our entry strategy. Now, this was already a great long trade entry, but to add even more strength and increase the trade quality, we used the correlation to the S&P 500. So let's pull it up and put it beside. So again, the S&P 500 had a reversal and fresh bullish momentum. And the Tesla also had a bullish bias through its fresh breakout. So knowing this, we used the correlation from the S&P 500 to the Tesla stock to increase the trade quality, making this an A plus trade entry. And if you have watched our past videos, this trade setup would have been crystal clear to you as we used every concept we have previously discussed. So let's go through the same concept but through the Apple trade we took. So again, here on the Apple stock, on the monthly timeframe, we had our key level here because of this reversal and we had it drawn in. So let's confirm this on the weekly timeframe. Again, same support level, same pullback. But here on the weekly, you also had a perfect trend line placed below. This then gave you your access point here where the trend line and key support level crossed. You then had a great long wick candle react to the access point and area of confluence. So both the weekly and monthly are confluent, but we need to look inside of this downtrend for a trend change in order to confirm it is over. So let's pull up the daily. Same key level, same pullback. This area here is this same area here. Now on the daily, you also had great divergence right at this key level. Trend line placed above, and once you had your breakthrough, you would look for trade entries long through the lower timeframes using our entry strategy. Now let's again bring up the S&P 500 to show the correlating price action. So on the left, the S&P 500 had a fresh breakout and bullish momentum. And since it is correlated to the Apple stock, which also had a fresh breakout and bullish momentum, this made the trade A+. Now if you want to learn our exact intraday entry strategy, head on over to our website at wisetrade.com. Also, if you want to learn how we design and edit our videos, go to wisetrade.com as well. So we know this video has gone on for very long, so we need your feedback right now. Do you like longer and more in-depth videos or do you like shorter videos? Tell us right now in the comments, write longer videos or write shorter videos. Now, if you want us to continue to release more content more often, we need you to smash the like button click the subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell. And we still have a lot of topics to cover. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next episode.